Hi, y'all. Welcome to 12 Days of Cozy with Kayla. If you don't know, hi, my name's Kayla. Um, I wanted to do a little winter series for y'all. And if you don't know that my normal content is typically weekly vlogs, based off of that alone, I knew I probably wasn't going to be able to keep up with what it takes to do a whole vlogmas <laughs> series. Props to anyone who can vlog daily. I don't know how y'all do it. Um, maybe someday I'll get to that level. But for now, I think I'm going to stick to my weekly vlogs. But with that noted, I still want to do something special for the holiday season. For anyone who doesn't know, I am from Minnesota and our winters can get pretty friggin' brutal. So I wanted to create a series that really highlighted the cozy comforts of winter. And with that, I wanted to have some delicious libations, some sweet treats, and some savory meals that y'all can make at home as well during this slightly chillier time of year. Within these 12 days, we're going to be doing a lot of cooking and baking. So get ready, bust out your aprons, dust off your pots and pans, and get ready to take this adventure with me. We're also going to have a few activities, whether that's wrapping presents, making cards, or just having a general nice cozy day at home. That's kind of what's going to be in these next 12 days. And I really hope you guys stick around to watch all 12 days, but please enjoy the rest of day one. So for some reason for day one, I wanted to create an introduction drink. So this is going to be a Earl Grey cocktail. It is made with an Earl Grey simple syrup and gin. So if you are not a fan of gin, you might not be a fan of this, but I find that the herbal properties that gin naturally has works really well with the flavor profile that Earl Grey itself naturally has. And the egg whites in here just make it really creamy and delicious. Let's actually discuss the theme of today. So not every day is going to have a theme. I wanted to pay homage to the song 12 Days of Christmas, which let's be realistic. <laughs> That's what this whole series is kind of based off of, 12 Days of Christmas. And at first, I really tried to like think of themes and days that really went along with the 12 days of Christmas. But to be honest, there was just some days where I'm like, this isn't gonna work out. So there are a couple days within 12 days of cozy that align slightly with the theme. But I will be quite frank, day one today aligns the most with day one of 12 days of Christmas. And that is because we are doing a pear theme day. So, you know, partridge in a pear tree. I think it aligns pretty well with our pear day. So everything we're making today, whether it's not this cocktail, but the next one, the next libation will have pears in it. Our main meal will have pears in it. And also our dessert is gonna have pears in it. So let's go start with our drink. Okay, y'all, so on today's menu, as mentioned earlier, it's going to be pear-themed. So we are going to make an apris, apris? We're going to make an empress pear fizz, which is a nice little libation. We're also going to have a pear crisp, as well as pan-seared pork chops with ginger and pear sauce. So let's get chopping. Oh my god, that's great. Look, that's just, yep. Mm -hmm. I knew it was cutting a beard. I'm like, how the fuck does it look like that? Okay, y'all, so this right here is honestly one of my favorite kitchen tools, and it's newer, it's a newer addition. Um, one of the most tedious tasks, in my personal opinion, is chopping up, dicing up, anything really. And this little chopper dude makes life 10 times easier. It also has an attachment where you can have like the mandolin feature. But today we're using the chopper. So we got quite a bit of pears to chop up. This is about three pounds worth of pears and then two little additions for our drink and for our um, pork chops. So let's get chopping. Ch 
Chop, chop, mother truckers. Oh, makes life so much easier. And it's all just there. It's all just there. For the Empress Pear Fizz, there are three different components. There's going to be the drink, there's going to be the syrup that you need to make for the drink, and then there's going to be your garnish. So let's start with the syrup components. For the syrup, you're going to need sugar, water, a chopped pear, two cinnamon sticks, and a few cardamom seeds. If you don't have cardamom, you can also use cloves as well as ground nutmeg. And that's what you're doing in the pot right here. Once you're done making the syrup, you will let that cool in a separate container. And then for the garnish, you will need a pear slice, a cinnamon stick, and star anise. And then for the actual drink itself, you're going to need Empress 1908 Indigo Gin, as well as some fresh lemon juice and soda water to top. This drink actually turned out really well and I would 10 out of 10 recommend utilizing the star anise. It added this beautiful flavor profile to the Empress Gin that I wasn't expecting but really appreciated and enjoyed. So yeah, try out this drink. It's super yummy. I will include the recipe in the description below. So next we have the pear crisp. For this, you're going to need a whole buttload of Bartlett pears. Um, those are sliced and diced <laughs> to your heart's content. You'll need granulated sugar, lemon juice, cornstarch, vanilla extract, cinnamon, nutmeg, ground ginger, ground cardamom, salt, and that's all for the filling. And then for the topping, you're going to need flour, old-fashioned rolled oats. Um, you can add pecans. Personally, I didn't add them, but if you want, that is an option. You'll also need brown sugar, granulated sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, and salt, and then some unsalted butter, which you are going to melt. But this pear crisp was so, so good. I would note though that if you are not a fan of cardamom or you just don't really love that strong of a cardamom flavor, I would either not add it or reduce it. Um, it is very strong. I definitely, out of all of the spices in here, I noticed the cardamom the most. So that's just my personal recommendation is if you aren't a cardamom fam, I personally really enjoy it. Um, either don't use it or just use a little less. We have our pan fried pork chops with pear and ginger sauce. For this, you are going to need your pork chops, however you prefer them. You'll need kosher or sea salt, as well as some cracked black pepper. You'll need olive oil, apple, apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, chicken or veggie broth, freshly grated ginger, roughly chopped fresh rosemary, one ripe pear, a yellow onion, cornstarch, and cold water. Now y'all, I have to be 110% honest with this particular dish. It wasn't my favorite. And while it might be someone else's favorite, I'm just gonna be honest. I've pre-planned all of these recipes for 12 Days of Cozy in advance. A lot of them, they're my very first time making. So we're gonna have some hits, we're gonna have some misses. And this one was just kind of meh. Like I wouldn't go through the effort of making it again. I have made much better pork chop recipes in my time. Um, but it is definitely one I'm glad I tried because it did seem really delicious and tasty when I was looking for recipes to make. A 
unfortunately, because I'm not the biggest fan of this specific dish, I'm not going to be including it in the description box below, but I will still link the recipe where I found it. Y'all, this pear crisp is really good. I would say, so I used a combination of really ripe pears and not so ripe pears. And I would 10 out of 10 recommend having really ripe pears. Like the softer the pear, the better, because I feel like they almost turn into this really nice melted down, delicious, sweet spiciness. And that crumble on top, perfect crunch texture. I would recommend though, like a whipped cream or even an ice cream on top because it just adds a nice little, it adds a nice, just a subtle layer of sweetness on top of it that I think you kind of do need with such a predominantly spicy, oh my God, my eyeballs are watering all of a sudden. <laughs> Crying over this pear crisp. Such a spice dominant dish. Like there's cinnamon, there's cardamom, there's nutmeg, there's ginger. So it just has a lot of really strong flavor profiles. There's so many strong flavor profiles in this that I kind of think you just need just that nice little of sweetness from like a vanilla ice cream or a uh, whipped cream. So good. And again, go for the really nice soft pears. If it's even slightly hard, it doesn't gonna, it's not gonna cook down as well. I mean, you could always cook it longer, but then you run the risk of burning the, the crumble on top. So just, just go with a nice soft pear. But with that, y'all, thank you for joining me on day one of 12 Days of Cozy. I'm gonna stop crying. I don't know, probably go wash my face. Who knows what the heck's going on right now. Y'all have a rest, wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow for day two of 12 Days of Cozy.